Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making, back with another full build video. And today we're going to be doing a fun project. Now I do want to say, spoilers ahead if you have not seen Top Gun Maverick. Um, just be warned. So this is the Academy F-14A kit, and I will be building it up as the Tomcat that appears in Top Gun Maverick. And this is a commission build. And the client requested an in-flight build because he wanted specifically to replicate the moment in the movie when Maverick does the split throttle maneuver in the F-14. And I don't often do in-flight builds, not because I don't like them. And I, in fact, I think they're usually done, if done well, they're, you're, they're really cool. And, and obviously airplanes will always look better in flight than they do on the ground, just because that is their natural environment. Um, but just the way that I like building, I prefer my stuff on the ground. However, this will be a fun exercise in doing stuff that I am less accustomed to. Um, but one of the things that we definitely needed to do for this kit, because it is in flight, we needed some pilots. So we're using some aero bonus pilots here, specifically designed for the F-14. And um, they're not going to be crazy accurate to the actors in the movie. Uh, to Tom Cruise and Miles Teller, uh, but it's going to be close enough here. Uh, the The quality of the resin pilots and seats is phenomenal um, and really helped to uh, liven up the cockpit a lot. Um, and, and in fact, the, the detail of the cockpit isn't bad either. And it's out of the box. It's pretty good. I think like if you were doing an, an out of the box build on the ground, you know, without pilots, all you would really need to do is add some belts to the to the kit seats, and it would look pretty good. Um, you could go to the step further and you know do like photo etch cockpit or or things like that, or even just like resin seats uh, to really detail it up. But I mean, that's totally optional. Um, so doing the doing the figures here, I really just kind of wanted to capture the a, a, a little bit of the essence of of the characters from the movie, um, <clears throat> and you know both kind of have them looking in different directions and. And uh, so the, the posability of the resin figures isn't great. You can kind of move their heads and then move their arms up and down a little bit. So I had to, I had to do a little bit of trimming to get them to sit how I wanted to in the aircraft. But in the end, I was quite pleased with how they, how they work. Um, painting of the cockpit is pretty straightforward. It's mostly just grays and blacks. And uh, so it's just a matter of going through and getting all those, all those painted up. Uh, so I hit it with a black primer first, then we have our gray color going on top, and uh, getting that all painted up. Um, the uh, the Academy kit does give you decals for all of the instruments, both the, um, the side console instruments as well as the instrument panels themselves. Overall, the decals are pretty good. Uh, I mean, they're, they're cartograph decals, so the decal quality is good. They didn't completely fit to the to the raised detail um i had to especially on the instrument panels i had to do some trimming to really get them to sit correctly um but in the end they they work out pretty good i think uh you could also because it is some the, the raised deal detail is pretty nice and, and crisp and sharp you could easily get away with painting it if you want to i just struggle hand painting instruments like that in 172nd scale so I opted to use the decals plus with the figures in the cockpit they kind of take up the majority of the space and so um, you know you wouldn't really be noticing the instruments but um, here you can see and and the other thing about the instrument panels themselves is each instrument panel is made up of about 10 to 12 separate um, decals so it's a little time consuming to get them all on there and all aligned but in the end, the, the time is worth it because it does look pretty good. Um, for any of the brush painting stuff that you see here, I am using Vallejo um, acrylics. These, this is their model range, so they're formulated for brush painting. This isn't their, their air range. And I think 99.9% .9 of the time when I'm doing any kind of brush painting, it will be a Vallejo acrylic. These are just by by and far my favorite acrylic paints to, to hand brush. And I think they're easy to work with. They've got a huge range of colors, not, not even just their model range, because they do 
uh, they have like a game range and fantasy and like they have so many colors to choose from that uh, pretty much anything you could want or imagine they'll have a color for it so it's just a matter of going around I do thin the Vallejo paints just a little bit and I just use tap water to thin them um, nothing fancy uh, I'd, I'd probably say like if I had to give a ratio it would probably be like 15 20 percent thinner to paint so here I'm just doing a little, little bit of a dry brush with light gray over the uh, the black areas just to kind of help pop some of the raised detail and um, give it a little, it kind of helps give it a little bit of weathering and, and kind of tone down just that stark solid flat black same thing on like the ejection seats here um, flat black especially at such a small scale just looks unnatural doesn't look right so doing a, a dry brush with like a light gray um, really kind of helps tone that stark flat black down as well as make some of the raised details pop so with everything down we're going to give everything a gloss coat this will help um, protect all of our paintwork it'll help protect the decals and allow us to do a little bit of weathering over all of the work that we've just done um, and if you've seen any of my build videos before you'll know this is this is pretty standard for what i do um, my, in my build process. So for the wash today, I'm going to be using MIG's interior wash. And this is kind of a good, like dark brownish gray color. It's not so strong like the, the dark brown wash that I normally use. Um, and this is, this is just great on like gray type cockpits or modern aircraft, things like that. So really we're just kind of going around trying to let the wash, uh, work its way around a lot of the raised or recessed details. After about 30 minutes, you can uh, wipe away the excess, and generally this works pretty good. I, I have had a few times where I applied the wash a little too heavily, and it kind of ate through my gloss coat a little bit, but if you're, if you're pretty sparing with it, it works pretty good. So with that done, and uh, we gave everything a, a quick matte coat, we can kind of finish building off, building up our, uh, our cockpit here. So all the side console detail goes in, and... Um, these all have their, their their slots that they slot into. We can get the our pilots in. Uh, I did paint the pilots off screen. They were 172nd skill pilots are a challenge to paint, let alone doing it in front of a camera. So here's a rooster, and then here's Maverick going in. Uh, I mean, I I tried my best to to do a little bit of you know uh, freehand painting on their helmets to to match their helmets in the movie. So I think I think you get the idea. Uh, we can get the uh, instrument panels on, um, and you can really see just kind of how like how little room the pilots actually have sitting in there. Um, but the the aero bonus seats and pilots go in there pretty much without any modification, so it's it looks pretty good, I think, all things considered. So now we can get the uh, the instrument hoods on, get those glued in, and uh, we have our basically our completed cockpit here. So, like I said, out of the box, I think it looks pretty good. Um, even if you did, even if you didn't have the resin seats and pilots in there, it's it's still a good looking cockpit. So with the cockpit done, we can start putting together the nose. Now the nose is kind of there's a lot of parts that go to building up the nose, and I think overall Academy did a pretty good job engineering this kit. There's only a few minor areas where you need to actually like fill in sand seam lines. Uh, they're they're pretty small, so. You know, congratulations to them on on doing this well and designing it well. The parts all fit together really well. And when I say like sanding and filling, like it's really just very minimal. Um, the the kit does offer you different options for the the panels around the gun. Um, so you have different options there. Uh, you will note there's a little bit of filler on the nose cone. That's purely my fault. I removed too much material when I was cleaning up the sprue attachment points, um, and I had to repair that. So that's that's on me. That's that's not the kit. Um, the bat bottom panel goes on. The uh, the nose sensor goes on. And um, again, we're doing this in flight, so I have to make modifications to the landing gear doors in order to put them in a closed position. This kit is definitely designed not to have the landing gear doors closed. Um, so I ended up just stuffing in some poster tack into the wheel well here um, in order to support the landing gear doors. 
And, and honestly, that it, it ended up being really simple and how this worked and the, the bond was really good. So, um, this was a, this was a good idea. The biggest issue here is just that the, the rear part of the landing gear door is attached to the actual landing gear leg. So you kind of have to cut and trim this piece off in order to get it to fit correctly. Um, but with enough trimming, it will, it will fit. Um, I wanted to do up the, uh, I believe this is the, the thing that projects the HUD up onto the front windscreen. Um, so I'm using a Molotow liquid chrome pen to mark that and then some Tamiya clear green to, to, to go over that. So you kind of get this nice reflective shine through that green. And then additionally, the armored glass on the front of the can or the front of the cockpit had a tint to it on most Tomcats. And in looking at the, uh, you know, stills from the actual film, it, their Tomcat had a bluish tint. I've seen some with a greenish tint, but it wasn't very strong. So I, it was very light spraying that on there. Um, and really you'll notice it much more once all the paint goes down, but, um, it, it is there. Canopy clear parts all going on. Um, these all fit pretty good. There, uh, there are seam lines on the clear parts that you'll want to clean up. Um, so just, just be aware of that, but everything fits pretty good. So now we can move on to the fuselage. Um, so there's a lot of parts that go into the fuselage. If you've ever built a Tomcat before, um, you'll be familiar with this because you have to do the intakes, the exhaust, the wing fold mechanisms. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff that goes into it. But again, Academy has done their engineering really well. And I really didn't run into any fit issues doing um, building up the fuselage, despite all the different panels that you have to put on and all the, the different parts that go into this. Um, and, and because so this, the Academy kit is very modular. You can build the F 14, a B B plus and D, uh, all out of the base kit. So there are a few places where you have to make sure you're putting in like the correct tailpiece or the correct gun cover or, whatever so just be aware of that when you're building but all the parts are there to build up pretty much any version of the tomcat which is really nice i think it's a lot of lot of great value for for the money i'm doing a little bit of pre-painting on the intake parts just so i don't have to that way i don't have to try and mask those off later when they're already like buried deep inside the aircraft um and this, I, this just makes life a lot easier, especially because they, they delineate the parts pretty much where the paint delineations would be. So between the white and the light gold gray here. Um, and then what I will end up doing is just filling that the intake with some foam later on to protect all of that uh, from the subsequent painting work. So here are the... Um, the intake assemblies all get put together. So you got the intake trunking, the first stage compressor blades, um, the, the variable pitch parts that go inside the intakes. Uh, it's all represented there. And then they get fit into the lower fuselage. And again, the fit here is actually really nice. You see a gap there just because I just haven't like fully pushed it in yet. Um, everything does line up pretty nicely here. And Virtually no filler is required um, to get that all to mate up. And then we can do the upper and lower fuselage halves together. Um, <clears throat> the wings, the, the, the sweep wing sweep system is set up similar to like the Tamiya kit so that you can leave the wings off for painting and they just slot onto those tabs. Um, so that's convenient. A lot of the, um, the seam lines are on natural panel lines. So again, very minimal cleanup is required. You can get the nose fitted to the rest of the fuselage. Fit here again is good. Uh, wings are a two-part affair. So you just have an upper and a lower wing. Um, so, and again, pretty simple. It just requires a little bit of sanding at the on the front end to get that seam cleaned up on the leading edge. Um, again, we are doing in-flight, so we had to do the landing gear doors shut this was a little more tricky than the nose wheel uh, gear doors, but I was able to get it in the end and it only required a little bit of uh, Vallejo plastic putty filler. Uh, burner cans are painted up and put together. Uh, pretty simple. 
uh, nothing really sp special about them, um, but they do fit in pretty nicely, and you get some nicely detailed burner cans to go on um, on the outside part of it. And again, you can do the um, early engine nozzles or the late engine nozzles. Um, and I, I am doing one open and one closed again because in the movie, as part of the, the split throttle maneuver, he, he has one open, one closed. Um, so tr again, trying to replicate that. As for masking the canopy, um, one of the nice things about the Tomcat canopy is it's, it's really just a bunch of straight lines. Um, so I'm using some thin Tamiya tape here to um, mask off the, the actual clear part itself. And then I'll go in and fill in the, the rest of it with some, some larger sections of tape. Um, so this is just a matter of going around and, and uh, outlining the window itself. Um, make sure that if you're doing any kind of cutting near your clear parts like this, that you're using a fresh, very sharp blade. It will minimize the, your, the chances of slipping and scratching your canopies. Um, very important here. And just to take your time, go slow. Um, no need to really rush this at all and risk causing an accident. For the front part, I'm using some larger tape uh, because these are all like gentle curves and compound curves so it's just easier to lay the tape down burnish it with uh you know the wooden dowel and then carefully trace it with with the knife and again i reiterate use a fresh blade for this um it'll just make your life so much easier and you really don't need to use a lot of pressure either like almost just the weight of the knife and the blade is enough to get through the tape and ensure that you're not totally scratching everything up and potentially risking your clear parts here um but yeah, the F-14 is a relatively simple canopy to mask, so it's it's not too difficult here. Um, moving forward, so here I can I'm showing you that it's just using some simple foam to um, kind of block off the intakes from both the priming and painting session that it will be following. Um, it's kind of fortunate that the intakes are relatively squared off; that the square foam just kind of fits in there perfectly. Um, and I can also use the foam for the exhaust as well to protect that. Um, and the foam I'm using is just a pluck foam out of a pluck foam case. It's just don't throw away those little rectangular squares. Just hang on to those things. All right, moving on to painting. There was a tiny gap between the front and the rear windshield here. So I have a little slip of paper in there just to kind of help protect it while I paint the, uh, the black of the, to, for the inside of the canopy frames. Um, the aircraft in the movie is in a, is in relatively good looking conditions. So I, I knew I wasn't going to be going hard on like weathering and stuff. And so I opted to choose, um, to use the, uh, Tamiya Ultrafine primer in gray as my primer instead of black. And then to do kind of a, an older style, um, pre-shading effect on this, as opposed to like. A, a newer black basing technique. Um, and so the idea here is you're just using a dark color. I'm using like a really dark blue gray to pre-shade all the panel lines and, and certain areas of the aircraft. And then when you spray over your, your base coat, you leave a little bit of that showing through and it just kind of adds a little bit of uh, variation to the aircraft. So here we're laying down the light gold gray. And this used to be, I mean, maybe it still is a popular method of, of priming and pre-shading. Um, I, I generally prefer the more black basing technique, but this really is just kind of the opposite of that. It's just kind of like black basing in reverse. So instead of, instead of shading with a lighter color over black base, you're doing a darker color over a light base. But the result in the end is, is what I was going after was just kind of a really lightly weathered light gold gray. Um, so with the whole aircraft sprayed, sprayed light gold gray, we can hit some of the details in black. This is a relatively simple paint scheme. The, the whole aircraft is overall light or um, light gold gray, and then the tail is picked out in black, and there's a few little accent details that we need to paint as well. Um, a part of the tail is molded onto the fuselage, so don't forget to paint that as well. Um, here I'm going to paint the inflatable bags that sit behind the wings. Um, 
I'm painting these with just a slightly different shade of gray from the light gull gray. So offhand, it doesn't look like I've painted it, but once I remove the masking, you'll 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 be able to see the difference. It's very subtle. Uh, again, I I was just I spent hours looking at movie stills, uh, trying to get the paint job as close as possible to what they had in the movie. Um, here we're hitting some Vallejo steel on the engine parts, and um, pretty pretty simple. That requires a, some complex masking here because there's there is a portion of it that needs to remain light gold gray on the sides, so you just have to be careful with your masking here. But you know, um, the masking always takes longer than the actual paint job. But uh, there were a few interesting markings on the aircraft on the back side. And, and at first, I couldn't quite identify what they were supposed to be until someone on Instagram pointed out that they were probably like non-slip texture used so that the actor, Miles Teller, could actually climb up onto the back of the aircraft when he gets on in the movie. And I think that totally makes sense to me. Um, finally, there's a few details we need to hit in aluminum. So this is the, the panel just in front of the, the gun, as well as the leading edges of the tails and the wings get painted in aluminum uh, so we're just using our Vallejo dull aluminum here which is just kind of perfect for the overall look of the aircraft that we're going for um, and I like this paint because it goes well under both gloss coats and flat coats and still has shine to it so that's that's why I like it um, now that we've got all of our main painting done we can give everything a gloss coat in preparation for decals and weathering. So we're just gonna go over the entire thing with our gloss coat. And <clears throat> um, yeah, just make sure we get a nice even coat here. Uh, you will notice that this is, I'm, I'm holding this with this clear stand. So that is a Games Workshop large flight stand used for their you know Warhammer miniature game. Um, I, I did cut a cross shaped slot into the engine for it to sit into um and it makes a convenient painting handle uh, but it is removable so here we're doing the decals so these are uh from a company called j8 designs and the decals were very good very nice and reacted well to my solva set and laid down with no silvering whatsoever very happy with them totally recommend them um again the the overall paint scheme is pretty simple uh, including the markings as well. I did use a few of the stencil markings from the kit, uh, but pretty much the rest of the, the uh, decals come from the J8 design decal set itself. And what's nice about this decal set is you actually get decals for uh, not only the F-14, but you also get decals for Maverick's uh, Top Gun F-18, as well as all of the uh, markings for all the F-18s used on the actual final mission in the movie. Um, so you actually get quite a few sets of decals in this set. So really nice. Highly recommend them. Um, I, I do like the kind of stark contrast between the light gold gray and the bright red and yellow on the decals. Uh, I just think it looks really cool. Um, I like the, the symbol on the tail here over the black. It just looks good in my opinion, even though it's so simple. Um, here we're just applying our solve set to get those to set down. Uh, painting the uh, IR light panels on the fuselage and uh, we can move on to our weathering stages. So <clears throat> the, you do get decals in the kit for the slime lights, but I didn't like how they looked. They just didn't look right to me. Moving on to weathering. Um, again, we are going to use our interior wash to do as a panel wash here. And again, I'm doing this just because the actual aircraft wasn't really weathered much. So this is really more just to um, enunciate the panel lines and that's really about it so it can all be applied on uh, when it's going over a nice gloss coat it goes down pretty good and um, just make sure you're hitting all the, the panel lines both the top and bottom of the aircraft here um, there are a lot of them this this kit has a lot of panel lines on it and rivet detail after about 30 or 40 minutes it's dry enough that you can hit it with a paper towel and uh, wipe it off so this is this is there's no thinner or uh, cleaner on the paper towel. It's just dry. Uh, that's one of the things I do like about this panel wash is it does come off for the most part without thinner. Sometimes you'll get, have some stubborn areas that do require a little thinner. You just have to be careful because it can pull up your subsequent paint work or paint job. 
But uh, hard to reach places, we hit with a cotton swab here and uh, make sure it's all cleaned up. Really like the look of it after after the panel liner's been cleaned up because it, it just it still looks kind of nice and clean, but you know you you get more definition out of the panel lines and uh, a lot of it like the little vent details and grill details. Uh, today I'm using Mr. Colors Flat Clear on this. I was curious to see how this would look, and overall I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's uh, properly thinned. It sprays nice and and goes down and and uh, you can really see it taking away the shine um pretty much in real time so it's it, it's it's easy to gauge how much you're laying down as you're spraying it uh, as opposed to some other ones that like require a little bit of drying time before it that f it starts really working uh, but we just kind of go over the whole thing <clears throat> with our flat clear uh, this provides a nice good clear coat protective coat over everything and helps take down that shine i didn't want to go super dead flat so i i um i was just really misting this on and trying to leave a little bit of shine left just so that you'd get a little bit of that showing through. Now we can remove the masking and uh, quite pleased with how the masking job turned out. And uh, it's uh, it's always satisfying when you have a when you when you're able to pull off the masking and you can see, hey, it, it turned out pretty good. So quite pleased, very happy with it, and uh, like how you can see the pilots in there. Um, one unique thing about the Tomcat and its swing wings is all of the staining that is left on the wing from the actual wing sweep mechanisms. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, Academy actually provides you a decal to represent this. And it's not bad, but it's not great. Didn't want to use it. So here I'm just going to be using some oil paint. You saw I used the pencil to kind of mark the outline of where that would be. Um, just putting some oil paint down and then we're just going to brush it on with a uh, loaded up brush with thinner on it uh, to kind of create the, the streaking effects from the, the I, I don't know if it's grease or what, um, hydraulic fluid or something, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but we can remove the masking and, and right now there's quite a hard edge there so we'll, we'll feather that out a little bit. Um, but I think this is I think this is pretty decent representation of that uh, of the the effect that the actual aircraft has um, from the the wing sweep mechanism. Um, and again, looking at reference pictures from the movie, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of grime build up there, but there was some. Um, here we're just dirtying up the the canvas bags behind the wings. Uh, those tend to get dirty pretty easily, so. Uh, just a little bit of oil paint on there and then blend it out with some thinner. Usually does the job pretty good. Uh, and there we go. You can see how they're looking. Not bad. So at this point, we can really kind of start getting everything put together and, and wrap up this build here. So uh, in the movie, the uh, aircraft is only armed with a pair of AIM-9 Sidewinders. So we'll get those glued on and uh, just checking the, the fit, make sure that it's not hitting the wing at all or anything. Um, just so that you can pose the aircraft how you want with the wings out or back. And uh, yeah, there we go. So here is the final reveal of the F-14 Tomcat from Top Gun Maverick. Um, I really like this Academy kit. I think it's, I mean, for 30 bucks, it's huge value for the money because again, if you buy some aftermarket decals, you can build just about any Tomcat you can imagine. Um, if you want to do a later D variant with, you know, uh, air to ground munitions, you'll probably need to buy some aftermarket weapons. But other than that, this kit pretty much gives you what you need and it goes together. Well, minimal fuss, great detail. Um, and let's be honest, the Tomcat just looks great when it's flying. Uh, it's just, it, it looks fast and it looks mean. So this was a great kit, really had a lot of fun with it, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you on the next one.